Now I'm going to talk to you about the last piece of work we carried out as uh, the regulatory uh, activities, and it's about the, soft, uh, the certification process for the software as a medical device. Now, before going into the details of what we did, I just would like to take you back to what you've seen also outside in the posters and to what Andrea has actually showed you this morning, and this is uh, the software pipeline, the mobilized software pipeline that would take you from raw data that you see on the left that is collected from the IMU sensors to the actual DMOs. Okay, and what really interests me here is that you should all know that like there are several different steps as you see there in blue and most of those are actually um, based on mechanistic model as we could uh, tell, but some others are actually uh, based on machine learning based approaches, and this is quite important, and we'll get back to that later on. But what also I would like to let you know, but you know already actually from all of the talks uh, of the day, is that, well, this pipeline has gone through extensive validation from the technical point of view, and you can find even more information on the webinar series online, on the publications, and in several other places, all connected to the mobilized work. And of course, well, thanks and well done to the technical team as well, because they did a massive amount of work on this point. Uh, then, second important feature, I would say, is that what it, it was briefly mentioned in the morning, and the point is that our pipeline, the software pipeline developed within the mobilized project, is actually designed to be device agnostic which means that as long as the IMU sensors actually uh, meet specific technical requirements that have been defined through the technical validation study, well, then the pipeline would provide uh, technically valid DMOs. And this is really important because that makes the pipeline uh, possibly being defined as a software as a medical device because it could be considered a standalone piece uh, or device itself. So, well, you can, I guess, by now clearly tell that it's definitely an asset of this project, and what can we do in order to exploit this asset? Well, being a medical device, first things that should come to mind is to commercially exploit the device, which means bring it to the market, and to do so, what we need to go through, or who's interested in this should go through, is a certification process, which means, again, as we mentioned for the DMOs, well, going back to the regulatory authorities or notified bodies in this case, provide evidence through dossiers and a lot of tests that your device, your medical device, is actually able to provide accurate and precise outputs. Well, this is also quite important because uh, once you reach the regulatory qualification for or certification of such a device, well, you would also reach, it, would, it was mentioned, I guess, in the panel today, uh, the TRL level, so the technological uh, readiness level. And that's quite important because that means how mature is your device, in this case, to be deployed. And, well, once you get regulatory authority, uh, sorry, a certification, well, then the TRL goes up to eight, and the TRL level goes from one to nine, where one is the lowest and nine is the highest value that you can get. So you can understand that uh, TRL uh, level 8 is quite, quite high, and that speaks for itself. But now, going back to the uh, certification process, there are a few ways you can actually pursue this and show the evidence you are required to show. And the most known is definitely the metrological characterization, which is what has been done through the ex extensive tests in the TVS. And, well, it could be quite a long process, and it requires you to show that your up output actually is close enough, actually quite accurately represent representing the actual gold standard at the moment for that specific uh, parameter that you're looking at. This is, of course, not the only approach, and another uh, thing that we thought is actually if we look at all of the blue blocks as a black box, basically, we could think that our processing pipeline is actually a model that takes input, the raw data, and just uh, provides as output our DMOs. And if this is actually applicable 
we should be able to leverage on some technical standards as those that you see in there. So the ASME VND40, where VND stands for verification and validation, which is uh, laying out a series of steps that you should take in order to show that your model, so in this case, the pipeline is actually credible. Uh, well, with these sort of questions, we went to the FDA and we actually identified a specific program which allowed us to ask for feedback before actually submitting an eventual uh, request for marketing authorization. And well, first, as in many other uh, interactions that we just presented, well, we tried to cover some basics. First of all, we asked whether we could actually, given the description we gave and that you heard already today several times, we could consider the mobilized pipeline as a software as a medical device. And well, the answer was yes. Uh, then whether there was a specific regulatory pathway that we should be uh, following. And given that there were no other, according to the FDA as well, precedents or other devices that actually were software as medical devices looking at the same context of use, and in this case, we were talking about MS, just to follow up on the other discussions we had with the FDA on the same clinical indication. Well, what we were told, we, yeah, we were told that the, um, actually, if we were going to request a marketing authorization, we should have started with a, the Nova application because there were no precedents, so we couldn't look for any similarity uh, anywhere else. But when we get to the core of our questions, actually, we can, uh, well, and we asked whether we could apply the VNB40 and if both uh, the VNV and the metrological characterization could have been used, which one should have been preferred? Well, actually here we got some well, interesting feedback that boils down actually to the fact that, as I mentioned earlier on, what they really care about is that you are able to show that actually the device, the software as medical device, can provide accurate and precise output, independently on the, the path you take, but you need to be able to show that. So, and that's normally accomplished by comparing your output to relevant reference standards. So this was the last piece of work, as I mentioned at the beginning, that we carried out as a, a regulatory team. And we got this feedback in a written form, but this is just following up on the two letters of support that we mentioned, the two publications, some uh, presentations or representations here and there and all together leading to, towards what was one of the objectives, which was indeed trying to uh, define as well as, well, as well as possible the pathways towards the regulatory qualification of both the DMOs and the software as a medical device, so our proce uh, processing pipeline. This is not the last step, well, perhaps for the project itself, but it should be leading, sorry, I missed something, to the an eventual future qualification or request for qualification opinion to get regulatory approval. Uh, and well, of course, also this was a little bit of a collegial effort, so I would like to thank Francesca Bottin and Professor Marco Viceconti, which is actually the ac academic lead for the regulatory activities, and well, all the rest of the consortium and all of you for listening to me.